Hi, I'm Bob. Let's continue to solve the last four problems for Chapter 11. Further issues in using OLS with time series data. In the textbook, Introductory Econometrics, a modern approach to seventh edition by Professor Jeffrey Woodridge. Let's find answers to problem five. For the US economy, let G price denote the monthly growth in the overall price level and let G wage be the monthly growth in hourly wages. Using the monthly data, we estimate the following distributed leg model. In part one, sketch the estimated leg distribution. At work leg is the effect of G wage on G price largest, which leg has the smallest coefficient. We can plot the coefficients in a graph using the coeplot command. From the distributed leg graph, or from the estimated equation, we can see that the largest effect is at the nice leg. The tails leg has the smallest coefficient. In part 2, for which legs are the t statistics less than 2? From the result window, we see that for the legs 2, 3, and 12, the t statistics are less than 2. The t statistic equals the coefficient divided by its standard error. In part 3, what is the estimated long run propensity? Is it much different than one? Explain what the long run propensity tells us in this example. The estimated long run propensity is the sum of the coefficients. It measures the long run change in price growth given a one unit increase in wage growth. It is 1.17. As the wage grows, by 1%, the price will grow by 1.17% in the long run. We can use the test command to do the F test or use the Lincoln command to do the T test for the low hypothesis that the long run propensity is 1. Both tests suggest that we fail to reject the null hypothesis at even the 10% level. In part 4, what regression would you run to obtain the standard error of the long run propensity directly? We can use the trick introduced in the textbook to estimate a regression model that contains the long run propensity as one of its coefficients. We define the coefficient LRP as the sum of the betas. We add to the right hand side of the equation the term LRP times G wage and subtract it so that the equation is unchanged. We arrange the equation and generate new variables x1 to x12. We regress G price on G wage and the new variables x1 to x12. The coefficient on G wage is the estimated long run propensity. It is 1.17 and standard error is 0.11. If we don't use this method, we can use the stata command Lincoln after the original regression to obtain the estimated long run propensity and standard error. We add the sum of all coefficients after the Lincoln command. We should have the same result. In part 5, how would you test the joint significance of 6 more legs of G wage? What would be the degree of freedom in the F distribution? After adding 6 more legs of G wage to the model, we use the 
test command to perform an F test for their joint significance. Adding six more legs to the model leaves 267 observations in the regression. There were 20 coefficients in the model including the intercept, so the number of degree of freedom in the unrestricted model is 247. The number of restrictions is 6. Let's do problem 6. Let HY6T denote the 3 months holding yield from buying a 6 months T bill at time T minus 1 and selling it at time T as a 3 months T bill. Let HY3 T minus 1 be the 3 month holding yield from buying a 3 month T bill at time T minus 1. At time T minus 1, HY3 T minus 1 is known, whereas HY6T is unknown because the price of 3 months T bill is unknown at time T minus 1. The expectations hypothesis says that these two different 3 months investments should be the same. On average, mathematically, we can write this as a conditional expectation, where I T minus 1 denotes or observable information up through time t minus 1. This suggests estimating the following model and testing the null hypothesis that beta 1 equals 1. In part 1, the estimated equation by OLS is as follows. Do you reject the null hypothesis at the 1% significance level? Does the estimate seem practically different from 1? The t statistic equals the estimate minus the hypothesis value and then divided by the standard error. It is 2.64 and its two sided p value is 0 0.009. We reject the null hypothesis at the 1% level. The estimate is statistically different from 1. It seems practically different from 1 because it is 10% higher than 1. We can also use the Lincoln command in Stata to find the answer. In part 2, another implication of the expectations hypothesis is that no other variables dated as t-1 or earlier should help explain HY6t once HY3t-1 has been controlled for, including one leg of the spread between 6 month and 3 month t-bill rates gives the following equation. Now is the coefficient on xy3 t minus 1 statistically different from 1? Is the lagged spread term statistically significant? According to this equation, if at time t minus 1, r6 is above r3, should you invest in 6 month or 3 month t bills? The t statistic is 1.39 and its two sided p value is 0.17. We fail to reject the null hypothesis that beta 1 equals 1 at even the 10% level. It is no longer statistically different from 1. The lagged spread term is statistically significant, with a p-value of 0 to 3 decimal places. 
Based on the estimated equation, if at time t minus 1, R6 is above R3, we should invest in 6 month T bills because the expected value of 6 months T bills is higher than the expected value of 3 months T bills. In part 3, the sample correlation between XY3T and XY3T minus 1 is 0 0.914. Why might this raise some concerns with the previous analysis? It implies that XY3 might be a random walk process. The usual T statistics are not valid. In part 4, how would you test for seasonality in the equation estimated in part 2? We can add three quarterly dummy variables to the model and test for their joint significance with an F-test. Let's solve problem 7. A partial adjustment method is as follows. Where yt star is the desired or optimal level of y and yt is the actual observed level. For example, yt star is the desired growth in firm inventory and xt is growth in firm cells. The parameter gamma 1 measures the effect of xt on yt star. The second equation describes how the actual y adjusts depending on the relationship between the desired y in time t and actual y in time t minus 1. The parameter lambda measures the speed of adjustment and satisfies lambda is between 0 and 1. In part 1, plug the first equation for y t star into the second equation and show that we can write the following equation. In particular, find the beta j in terms of the gamma j and lambda and find mu t in terms of e t and a t. Therefore, the partial adjustment model leads to a model with a lagged dependent variable and a contemporaneous x. We plug the first equation for yt star into the second equation. After rearranging, we write the equation. In part 2, if the conditional expected values of E and A are 0 and all series are weakly dependent, how would you estimate the betas? The OLS method is appropriate because E and A have 0 expected values. The conditional expected value of mu is 0 the OLS estimates are consistent. In part 3, if beta 1 hat equals 0 0.7 and beta 2 hat equals 0 0.2, what are the estimates of gamma 1 and lambda? Plug these values in the relationship equations and we have lambda hat equals 0 0.3 and gamma 1 hat equals 2 over 3. Let's finish the last problem. Suppose the equation satisfies the sequential exogeneity assumption in equation 11.40. In part 1, suppose you difference the equation to obtain the following equation. Why does applying OLS on the differenced equation not generally result in consistent estimators of the betas? We can consider the simplest case with a single xt. 
the first difference gives this equation. Mu t is uncorrelated with x t, x t minus 1, etc. But mu could be correlated with future x. We can show that the covariance between delta mu t and delta x t equals minus covariance between mu t minus 1 and x t. If there is feedback from y to future values of x, the covariance does not equal zero. In part two, what assumption on the explanatory variables in the original equation would ensure that OLS on the differences consistently estimates the betas? If x satisfies the strict exogeneity assumption, that is, for each time period t, the expected value of the added term mu given the explanatory variables for all time periods is zero, then OLS estimates are consistent. In other words, the explanatory variables in any time period are uncorrelated with the error term in any time period. Under this assumption, the covariance between delta mu and delta x is zero. Thank you so much for doing the problems with me. See you tomorrow in the computer exercise section. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.